Are we focused in? We locked in. How's that look? Yeah, whatever. Who cares? And uh, we're going to record over on this side of the room. We're recording over here now. Dear America. Huh? Huh? Hey, how are you? And welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Jacob Andrew Sharp. And America, we have a doozy for you. And when I promise a doozy, that means that I promise true American nuggets. Because that's what this country deserves. It's what this country needs. These nuggets have it's been tested before. And every single time, these nuggets emerged unbowed and unbroken. So now, it's our turn, our moment to stand up and prove ourselves worthy of, pro of protecting the American nugget. Together, Together we, we can, can reawaken, reawaken the, the heroic, heroic spirit, spirit of, of a, a great, great nugget. And, and may God continue to protect the United Nuggets of America. America. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. Guys, a couple weeks ago, Katie Britt, the senator of Alabama, gave us the most like out of pocket NPC ASMR rebuttal to the president's State of the Union. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. So welcome back to another episode of Canadian boy can't believe what the heck is going on downstairs. When Canadians see American politics, it feels like there's a fight club happening in the basement. Hey. Hey! Cut it out down there! Trying to watch my programs. I'm sorry to break it to you, America, but you're the basement. And don't worry, I know that Canada's like a low-budget bungalow, but you're still downstairs. And somehow America is like the really cool, huge, awesome carpeted basement with video games and a mini fridge. But then you open the mini fridge and there's like mold on everything. And by mold, I mean like guns and yelling. Let's take a look. Good evening, America. My name is Katie Britt, and I have the honor of serving the people of the great state of Alabama and the United States Senate. However, that's not the job that matters most. I am a proud wife and mom of two school-aged kids. My daughter Bennett and my son Ridgeway are why I ran for the Senate. I'm worried about their future and the future of children in every corner of our nation. And that's why I invited you into our home tonight. Like so many families across America. That's great, you have a family, that's awesome. You know for sure she was yelling at her kids to make the kitchen that clean. She for sure forced them to clean that kitchen. I don't care if your fingers hurt. I need this place to be sparkling. I want it to be so clean, it looks fake, as fake as my teeth. My husband, Wesley, and I just watched President Biden's State of the Union address from our living room. And uh, what we saw was the performance of a permanent politician who has actually been in office for longer than I've been alive. One thing was quite clear, though. President Biden just doesn't get it. He's out of touch. Under his administration, families are worse off. Our communities are less safe, and our country is less secure. Dude, she fucking roasted him. Old guy, Biden's old. We were watching that geezer from our living room, and I gotta say, some of his policies are from the dinosaur age. Yeah, let's just say uh, Biden is as old as democracy. I just wish he understood what real families are facing around kitchen tables just like this one. You know, this is where our family has tough conversations. It's where we make hard decisions. It's where we share the good, the bad, and the ugly of our days. It's where we laugh together. And it's where we hold each other's hands and pray for God's guidance. And many nights, to be honest, it's where Wesley and I worry. Kitchen tables just like this one? What are you talking about, Katie? Oh, right, because in her version of America, everyone is just a, like, glazed-over white person with nothing to say. <laughs> and
And Katie does this really good job of talking about how she's from a, a, a grassroots family. She comes from a family that built their life from the ground up. And then she takes a pretty hard pivot. We know that President Biden didn't just create this border crisis. He invited it with 94 executive actions in his first 100 days. When I took office, I took a different approach. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas. That's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. She told me not just that she was raped every day, but how many times a day she was raped. We wouldn't be okay with this happening in a third world country. This is the United States of America, and it is past time, in my opinion, that we start acting like it. President Biden's border policies are a disgrace this crisis is despicable. And the truth is, it is almost entirely preventable. From fentanyl poisonings to horrific murders. Huh? That's a big jump. The cartel and sex trafficking? I... I don't know what to make of this video. Whoa. Whoa. But I don't know what point she's trying to make. You know, she talks about Biden and how he stopped the building of the wall. I guess that's going to cause people to get sex trafficked by the cartel. Uh? This just kind of reminds me of when Donald Trump tweeted out that all Mexicans are... Uh, they're sending people that have lots of problems and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Whoa. Whoa. Now, my big issue with Katie's rebuttal to President Biden, it's just a little hypocritical. She's talking about very serious issues of sexual assault and rape. Those are true, real horrors. Those stories are horrific. But that doesn't make sense coming from the senator of Alabama. I know you're trying to advocate for women, but that doesn't line up with your state's values. You're one of the states that banned and criminalized abortion. You're the state that has countless anti-gender affirming laws. And you're the state that just stripped women and families access to IVF treatment off of the ridiculous and hypocritical notion that inseminated eggs that don't make it to term is the same as killing a child? That's the same as killing a baby? What about the people who are in the middle of IVF treatment? You want them to just terminate those eggs? That would in turn be killing those babies. That's Those are your words, not mine. It's just so hypocritical. Katie, your state has so many harmful and dystopian laws against women. You're quite literally trying to control women and their bodies. What's next? No more periods? No more shedding of the uterine wall every time an egg doesn't get fertilized. Cause that's an unborn child. What are you guys talking about? Katie, that's your state. It just seems like you're cherry picking women's rights. You're only pro woman when it's convenient for you and your values. Not, uh, not very pro woman of you, Katie. And that's my two cents on it, but you know. There are empty chairs tonight at kitchen tables, just like this one, because of President Biden's senseless border policies. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there's not. Are you trying to say that people are getting kidnapped? There's people missing at dinner because of Biden? Hey, Katie, how about no one wants to go to your house? You got no good snacks and no one wants to be there. Sorry to break it to you, but it's not the border. It's because you don't season your food. She looks like the type of person who would call gum spicy. And Katie does a really good job of wavering between really intense topics. Mr. President, enough is enough. Innocent Americans are dying and you only have yourself to blame. It's been a minute since Joe Biden pumped gas. And that's why everyone gets murdered because Joe Biden, he's a little old. He's so old, I think he invented murder. Like the whole time watching this, I can't tell if she's gonna cry or like start eating deodorant. <laughs> Now, 
I'm not a big politics guy. I don't like the government. I think they're a bit bananas. And I think this video is a great demonstration of why the government is in shambles right now. And I think most governments are in shambles right now. They don't know what's going on. They're trying to relate to people and then they do something like this. They pull some alien ass bullshit. Like she's looking at the camera and talking about really intense things like she just got to this planet. You know what? How could I make this more unsettling? Could we make my kitchen so beige that it hurts? I wanna be so disconnected that the American people think that their senator has scales under her skin. Again. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party is undercutting America's workers. China is buying up our farmland, spying on our military installations, and spreading propaganda through the likes of TikTok. I'm not like other white moms. I wear a cross around my neck. We have to ban TikTok because China's gonna kill us. China's stealing our information. And the only thing I want China to do is to make more of these cross necklaces so I can run my drop shipping business. That's the American dream. Girl boss capitalism. And don't forget about TikTok. Don't forget about Tic Tac Toe. I love how obsessed America is with like the spreading of misinformation and stealing people's info. How about we check on that fucking red haired guy who's running that website that keeps telling lies? That keeps letting my aunts and uncles post videos of four-wheelers to my page, knowing full well I've never touched a four-wheeler in my fucking life? China, stop trying to hack our information. Leave the hacking and meddling to things like Facebook, a true American social media app. Facebook, they only meddled in like one election, okay? I'm a middle-aged white person. If I want my information stolen, I want it to be by an American. And China, don't you dare touch my kids' info. I don't care what they're looking at, but it better not be TikTok. I don't monitor what my kids watch, and that's your fault. Now let me put my font up to a thousand so I can go yell about things that I don't understand. And it's the TikTok ban that just proves that all these politicians are out of touch. Mr. Chair, I have a few points to make, uh, and it's interesting to hear this respectful debate. First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. <laughs> Yeah, this is proof that maybe, just maybe, some of these people are too old to be in politics. I know that might not be a cool thing to say, but she's too old. Tic-tac-toe, that sucks that your like political statement about whether this is a ban or not, it's a pun. Oh, this is a joke to you. If I get a laugh, then it means I'm right. Trust me, I've been trying. It doesn't work that way. This just gives me flashbacks to the Pokemon go to the polls. I'm not saying that old people don't have value. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be working in politics at all. Maybe some of these people shouldn't be fully in charge. You shouldn't worry about how the country operates because you got to figure out how you operate. You shouldn't get to operate the country when we have to operate on you because you don't operate well. We don't let babies make decisions. You don't let babies run the country. And I feel like there's a certain age where you regress back into being a baby. And right now, with all these old people, I'm hearing a lot of whining. Wah, wah, wah. You shouldn't be able to make decisions if you have a diaper. Let's get some younger folks into the mix. Let's see what happens. And Katie's not that old, right? And at least, like, she's better than Mitch McConnell, right? Dude's, like, shutting down in the middle of addresses. After finishing the NDA uh, this week, it's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, uh... What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's right. Uh... Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? And I feel bad. I don't want to make fun of him. He's, well, I kind of do. He's a piece of shit. 
Obviously, he has health issues. His system doesn't run like it used to. He's like a laptop with an old battery. When it's plugged in, it says it's at 100%. And then you unplug the charger and the computer is red hot. And then all of a sudden, your laptop's on fire and it's just redlining at 1%. Guy all of a sudden looks like his life is flashing before his eyes. He shouldn't have to worry about the country and making those addresses. He's a thousand. It's like when you call tech support and they're like, have you tried unplugging it? Yeah, and now it won't turn on at all. America deserves leaders who recognize that secure borders, stable prices, safe streets, and a strong defense are actually the cornerstones of a great nation. Now, again, this is like my fourth time making this video, and that's only because over the past couple weeks, I've seen more and more info on like her reaction and what she thinks of the world's reaction to her video. They made fun of it on SNL. Scarlett Johansson played Katie. And then after that, Katie went on Ted Cruz's podcast. That's the world we live in. Ted Cruz has a podcast. What's next? Ex-Prime Minister Stephen Harper gonna start Twitch streaming? I'd probably watch that. Ooh. But she went on Ted Cruz's podcast and she has such a weird thing to say about it. And obviously, I think she was upset that they made fun of her, but she seemed pretty stoked that they got Scarlett Johansson to play her. And, and by the way, okay, the thing that was the coolest is, is you're played by Scarlett Johansson. I mean, how awesome is that? Okay, Katie, look, Katie, <laughs> Scarlett Johansson is hot. <laughs> Yes. And, 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 and uh, all right, I am genuinely jealous because, look, SNL has come after me a bunch of times. Right. They don't ever have Tom Cruise pay, play me. How come you get a gorgeous movie star? And, and like, uh, you know, th that is a real compliment uh, look, th th that you ought to be pretty psyched with. Well, I actually was pretty pumped about that. I, I thought, you know what, obviously, no, we're going to be the cold open. Like, how is this going to work out? And you wonder who in the world is going to play you, right? Katie. Uh, they didn't put out a casting call. She was just the host that week, and they would have gotten anyone to make fun of your bullshit. Hey, Kate, Scarlett <laughs> Johansson is hot. Good old porn loving Ted Cruz. Oh, she is hot. Of course, they didn't get Tom Cruise to play you. You don't look like Tom Cruise. I'm sorry to break it to you, Ted, but you don't look like a leading man. This is gonna be mean, but Ted. You look like a peeled onion. You look like a peeled onion with a beard. But it's just crazy to me that Katie thought that people were gonna love this. She thought she was gonna get like a standing ovation from the country. The, her whole video just looks like a Sarah McLaughlin like we gotta save America video. America, we have to fix it. Did you know that there's some people who don't wear cross necklaces? Did you know that there's some people who use paprika? Ugh. For just $1 a day, you can save white women who are addicted to wearing capri pants all year round. This upcoming election, now I, I know I'm Canadian, I know that it seems weird that I'm talking about American politics. It's a circus. Joe Biden and Donald Trump again? Those two guys again. What, so one can say something racist and the other one can just fall asleep? We'll repeat your, uh, we'll... Anytime I start talking, they take the red light off. You heard the hostages singing. That was the hostages. They're the J6 hostages, I call them, because they are. I'm being indicted for you. I am. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. He stinks. That's not the kind of people. You know, being a prosecutor is a very. Look, he can't campaign. He can't campaign. He can't speak. So we call it migrant crime. I come. I came up with that name because I come up with a lot of good names. You see, Maduro, Venezuela. Though it's a. Uh Unbelievable. We talk. This is a positive swamping. That's who's in charge. Joe is obviously the lesser of two evils, but hey. The beer brewed here. <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer. <laughs> it is defined. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why it's coming. <laughs> but this little Canadian cuck boy, he doesn't think either of those guys should be in charge. I'm just some fucking lib maple cuck. What do I know? Don't worry, Canadian politics are also a circus. So, <laughs> the high school drama teacher over here accuses others of liking the sounds of their own voices. This from a guy who, if he were made of chocolate, he would eat himself. <laughs> yes, Mr. Speaker, I was a high school teacher before getting into politics, and I'm having a little trouble remembering what exactly the job that the leader of the opposition had before getting into politics. And he left right in the middle of the semester, and I'm having trouble remembering why. Oh! 
That's what we have here. Two guys that look like if you typed human male into an AI generator. Our options are two guys that look like they wear medium jeans. Jeans that don't have any length or width. They're just medium jeans. Two guys that look like they have milk with dinner. That's our country. So there you go. That's my deep dive into who, who are these people? Who are these people and why are they in charge? It doesn't make any sense to me, America and I'm sorry. And the point of this video, uh, you know, let's get some fresh faces in into politics. You know, let's get some younger folks. Voting matters. Help out in your community. If you can help out in your local government, we could make the world a better place. Or we all start talking like this. Or maybe we stop filming everything that politicians do. I'd rather see him nude than see what's going on with actual politics. It's too vulnerable. I'd rather watch these people fuck than hear about what they think about the country. Alrighty guys, that's the end of the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for a lifetime supply of nuggets. Alrighty guys, I gotta get out of here and... Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026. Okay, bye. Goodness, y'all. Bless his heart.